Hey there, so this tutorial is part of a 9 video series where I'll show you how to produce an Afrobeat song starting from how to make the beats, how to set up a session for recording, recording lead vocals, backup vocals, mixing and even mastering the entire song for this project. So don't forget to check the description for links to other parts of this series to watch the rest of it. Hey there, welcome to lesson 5 or part 5 of this series where I'll show you how to mix Afrobeat drums. The techniques you need to know to make your drums punchy, make it groovy, make it clean, clear, and make it translate on any listening device that you may own or your audience may listen to. All right, so now we're going to start mixing these beats and we're going to solo the drums. I prefer to start mixing with the drums because I feel that it's usually the easiest place to start mixing. So we're going to go to the part that has the most elements, which is this section right here. So we're going to start with the kick, we'll solo the kick. And for mixing, um, I recommend you, when, before you start mixing, right, you create a little bit of headroom in your mix, which is you just select the part you're about to mix and then take it down a little bit, all right? This is not compulsory, this is just a tip that I feel it helps, all right? So we'll turn it down a bit, and then we'll start, we'll start with the kick, we'll turn these elements off, and then we're going to start with the good old stock EQ from FL Studio. So typically for kicks, I recommend you just cut out with about 35, 30 heads below within that range, all right? But this varies depending on the kind of kick you use. Then next, we're going to turn on our rim shots. Then we're going to EQ that as well. If you notice your rim shot may be too bright, you can try damping it a little by taking out some of the high end like this. I think the kick is a bit too sharp, so I'm going to take out some more of this section right here to make it sound a bit more round. So I can pan my rim just slightly to the right about within um, 2 to 8 or 9 or even 10 percent, right? But you can leave it in the center if you like as well, but sometimes I like moving it a bit to the left or to the right. So next, we'll move on to the next most recurring element, aside from the shaker. Okay, we want the shaker to come last. So we're going to use, I think, this percussion. Going to come to step eight, type high pass. And we want to take out some of the high end as well. So we'll take a low pass as well. So since it's a bass drum element, I prefer to leave it in the middle. All right, it should stay in the middle. So this next percussion element is a regular percussion, so I can actually have the freedom to pan it either left or right, depends on where it fit best in the stereo image of the mix. And now the last part is the shaker for the drums. Let's see how that sounds.
So if I still struggling with how to make really good music, whether you're trying to record, make beats, mix, master, or all of the above, all you have to do is click the link in the description below that says one on one private lessons. And I'm going to teach you personally how to make much better music via Zoom. It's really interactive and it's result based, results guaranteed. So don't forget the link is in the description. Hit the link, fill out the form. So let's get back to the tutorial, shall we? All right. So now we're going to do something called bus compression for our drums, right? Which we're going to route all our drum elements into a single um, part on the mixer. That is this insert right here. We're going to route all of them there and then add some compression to glue it together, all right? So I'm just going to select this, route this right here. But I will name this first of all. So it's easy for me to know. Drum bus. And I can call this... Um, I can color it something really bright so I can easily spot it, all right? Make sure you deselect it from the master channel. Keep doing the same. Drum bus. So you check to make sure it's all there. So we're going to be using this um, CLA76 compressor from Waves. Now, there are many options you can use for your boss compression, but for the moment, I really like how this sounds on my projects, right? So I just prefer using this. So we're going to listen to it. Just adding it alone already adds some effect and feel to it. Let's listen to see how it sounds. And without it here, it sounds. And then with it again. It brings up the elements, that is the percussions, make them really come alive. And it also makes the kick sound a lot sharper, right? It clamps the transient and make it more sharp and punchy. We're going to reduce the attack a bit. And also release, um, increase the release time. And for this compressor, the input is typically how you detect the amount of compression you want, all right? So let's just adjust this a little bit. So when you add um, processing to a bus channel, it typically, actually compressors, it typically affects the elements are running through it. For example, you can hear the shaker is now loud, a, a lot more louder than before. The percussions are also more alive. So you may need to come back to the individual channels and adjust the loudness levels. All right, that sounds a lot more balanced now. And you know, this is mixing. We can always go back to adjust it later on. Nothing is final, all right? So we're going to add a boss EQ as well, just to tone it up even more, all right? But this is not necessary, but this is just by preference, all right? Let's adjust the high frequency, turn it down a little bit. All right, let's see how it sounds without the EQ, if it sounds better. And now with the EQ. I like with the EQ, but I think the harshness from the shaker is still there. So I'm just going to turn down the loudness of the shaker loop. sounds more like it. So this is typically how I mix my drum elements. All right. 
hey there if you found this video helpful don't forget to hit me with the thumbs up so other people that need videos like this can easily find it right here on youtube and also hit the subscribe button down below so that you can keep up to date with latest tutorials on production beat making um recording vocals mixing mastering in fl studio all right